Grace and peace, family. Pastor Derek Parks here. Listen, I am overly excited that uh, I get to worship God with you guys today and just so grateful for all that the Lord is up to in the life of our church and in our city and in our country and our community. And so uh, just grateful to the Lord to be here with you guys today and to continue in our series called Give Thanks. So we've been in this series, and this series is designed to help us develop a heart of gratitude towards God, which in turn leads us towards generous giving. And, and thankfulness, as we've defined it, is not just an occasional act, but it's a lifestyle of intentional and spontaneous appreciation that leads us into the presence of God. And this empowers us to be grateful in all circumstances, and it generates an overflow of generosity in our hearts. And so as a result of that, I'm asking for us over the next few weeks to consider uh, and, and, to, and to postulate and to, to develop a, a, in our hearts a spirit of gratitude in a heart that's fixed towards God, towards giving thanks. And so... One of the practical things that we're doing here is we're asking that each of you would prepare a special gift uh, in your heart, a financial gift for our Christmas offering that's going to be on December 20th, 2020. You can just give online on that date and designate that gift towards the Christmas offering. Every year we do this. We do this every year for our Christmas offering, and it's just a way and a means for us to, uh, to offer to God what he has given to us. And so uh, we're going to give back to God in this season. And so the scripture tells us that when we give, uh, give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over and flowing into your lap. And so uh, we want to we invite you to that, to give towards this Christmas offering. And as you know, we use that, those monies to, to, to do things in our community and serve our community. And we're going to continue to do that. And so we invite you to that on December the 20th, 2020. We want you to extend yourself to, uh, to reach that invitation. We want you to stretch yourselves to give to the Lord. And, and that is over and above your regular tithes and offerings. So that's enough family business. Uh, I just wanted to talk to my Epiphany folks real quick. Uh, but for uh, the rest of us who, if you're just watching for the first time online, we welcome you. We say thank you for joining us uh, as we jump into this second installment of our new series called Give Thanks. So I'll be in Luke today. Uh, I was in Luke last week. I'm going to be in Luke again today, Luke chapter 7. And so I'll be in chapter 7, and I'll be from verses 1 through 10. And so I'll read uh, for your hearing, and then we can jump right in to the Word of God as we pray. So hear these words of our Father. It says in Luke chapter 7, verse 1, it says, When he had concluded saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. A centurion servant who was highly valued by him was sick and about to die. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, requesting him to come and save the life of his servant. Verse four says that when they reached Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of you to grant this because he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. Verse 6, he goes on and he says, When Jesus went with them and when he was fa not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to tell him, Lord, do not trouble yourself. Since I am not, listen to this language. He says, since I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. That is why I didn't even consider myself worthy 
to come to you. Hear this. This is so powerful. This powerful word of faith. He says to Jesus, but just say the word (laughs) and my servant will be healed. Verse eight, he says, for I too am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under my command. I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another one, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. And verse nine tells us that Jesus heard this and was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found so great a faith even In Israel, when those who had had been sent returned to the house, they found the servant in good health. Father, I pray by your spirit, God, that you would help us today. God, lead us into your word. Guide us into your truth. Father, help us to understand and see your word come alive today. God, we need your word more than anything else. And so, Father, I pray by your spirit that you would stand in my body and think through my mind and speak through my mouth. Let the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer, in whom I place all my trust. And everybody said, Amen. There's a story that's told one day of a beggar who was by the roadside, and he asked for alms from Alexander the great. Now, as Alexander the Great was traversing along this road, he came along this beggar who asked him if he could just spare a couple coins. And so as Alexander was going about, he, he, he asked him, he says to the courier who was with him, he, he, he told him to give him some coins and to pass some coins along to him. Yet the emperor He didn't throw silver, copper coins at him. He threw some gold coins at him. And the the, the courier, he was he was astonished by his generosity. And he said to him, he said, sir, copper coins would have adequately met the beggars need. Why did you give him gold? And Alexander responded in royal fashion. And he said this. Here's what he says. He says, copper coins would suit the beggar's needs, but gold coins suit Alexander's generosity. (laughs) And so as you see this, I I need you to understand this, is that is that that's what we're called to to in this passage. and, And that's what we're called to see. We see an unworthy beggar receiving more than he deserves from a generous giver and not because of the status of the beggar, but only because of the generosity of the giver. And that's so vitally important for us to understand and capture this and understand this in our hearts. And and I need us to see this is that generosity is all about perspective. (laughs) See, you can be generous when you recognize and you understand and know that the source of everything that you have is not yourself. That's why you can give thanks and live with a spirit of gratitude and have a heart that's fixed toward thanking God for everything that you have, whether you have a little bit or whether you have a lot. Here's what you get to capture in your heart and know is this is that God is the one who gives you everything. And because of the abundance that God has, because of the abundance that is in him, you can give away and give thankfully and generously because the one who gives. It's greater than all. And here's what I need you to see. I need you to see this. Is that your generosity will not go unnoticed. Here, this Jewish perspective, I want you to, to capture this in, in, in verses one through five. It says that, that when he had concluded speaking to the people who were listening to him, a centurion servant who was highly valued by the centurion. The centurion, he valued the one who was under his control. Now, this man was a leader and he held a position that afforded him lots of visibility and people saw him and they recognized him and they honored him because he was a great leader. But yet here's what I need us to capture and see is that he did not utilize his visibility for himself. (laughs) He utilized his visibility for someone else. 
And, and, and here's what I want to ask for you today. Is your visibility, is your desire to be visible, is your desire for visibility just for your benefit or is it for the benefit of others? See, you have to ask yourself that question is why am I doing the things that I'm doing? Why am I going in the direction that I'm going? Why am I seeking to pursue the things that I'm seeking to pursue? Is it just for me or is it for someone else? And see, when you capture this reality, when you capture this picture, here's what I need you to understand. Most of us want visibility, but it's for us. See, we want to be social media influencers and, 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 and we want to have promotions on our job and, and we want to have influence in the political sphere. Uh, but here's the question. The question at hand is, what does your visibility value? <laughs> See, this leader, the scripture says that he had a highly valued servant. This word for highly valued is a word that means to regard or to prize as a, as a, as a precious possession. And, and here's what generosity, generosity does. Generosity begs the question, what do you value? See, see, when we talk about giving thanks and when we talk about generosity and gratitude and all these things, when we talk about that, generosity begs the question, uh, what do you value? And see, when we talk about this, when we talk about what we value, we have to, to clearly understand and not understate that the things that we value are ultimately the things that we will pursue. And so here's the question I want to ask for us at Epiphany Church today is, do we value lost people being saved? <laughs> see, see, that's the question at hand. That, that's the question is, 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 do we value seeing saved people get pastored? through being in a, in, in a, in a woven uh, community where they're, where they're experiencing the community of God and the grace of God? Do we value seeing those same people get pastored where we help people to lead lifestyles of worship and discover their purpose and, and so that so that those same trained people can move on to go and get mobilized and, and leverage their work in order to make a difference in the world? The question is, what do we value? And when we give, first of all, when we give thanks, when, when we operate in, 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 in a spirit of gratitude towards God, thanking him for everything that he's given to us as a people and as a church, when we, when we operate in that, when we, when we don't move from that, when we walk in that, here's what we ultimately do. We communicate to God the things that we value. See, what, what do you do with your time? <laughs> See, is the question. Well, what do you do with your talent? Is the question, are, are, are you serving in, in the body of Christ or, or are you just sitting on your talents and, and, and not using your talents for the benefit of the expansion of the kingdom of God? We just did a series called The Kingdom and, and we talked about the reality that we have a responsibility to further the kingdom as believers in Jesus Christ. Now, if you're not using your talents to serve, if you're not using the talents and, 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 the, and the gift of your personality to invite people to church and, and and to call people into relationship with Jesus, then, then you're ultimately not walking in a spirit of gratitude and thankfulness. So it, it asks the question, what do you do with your time? Ask the question, what do you do with your talents? And then generosity asks the question, what do you do with your treasure? And so here, here's what happens it, 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 is Satan will often test you with the things that you value most. <laughs> See, 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 Satan will often test you with the things that you value the most. See, some of us value our autonomy more than we value uh, being in relationship with other people. Some of us value our independence more than we value our submission to leadership. See, some of us value things that are that are not biblical and we walk in things that are not of God and that are not biblical simply because. We've placed our value in the wrong things. And so here's what we got to see. Is that Satan will oftentimes he'll try to take your most prized possession and destroy you with it. See, I wish I had some time for us to get into this, but but here's what I want to want you to know is that is that is that when you step into generosity as a follower of Jesus, when you step into generosity and you give generously to 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 Epiphany Church uh, of Wilmington, you give towards seeing the values that are held here, the biblical values that are held here become accomplished. And, and when you allow Satan 
to, to, to get mixed into your values, what ultimately happens in your life is that things start to get distorted and you don't value the right kinds of things. So here's what happened. <laughs> Back to the passage. It says that the, the, the servant of the centurion who was highly valued by him was sick and about to die. What happens when the thing that you prize the most becomes sick? What, what, what happens when the marriage <laughs> that you wanted so much starts getting sick? What happens when your career starts to deteriorate? What happens when your car that you prayed and asked God for starts getting a little sick? <laughs> See, we, we value all these things. We value marriages and relationships and careers and possessions and cars. We value those things. But what happens when those things get sick? But here's the reality is this, is that a perfect marriage is just an attempt to avoid pain. <laughs> See, we want perfect marriages because we want to avoid pain. We don't, we don't want anything to, 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 uh, to affect us. We don't want anything to hurt us. We don't ever want to be hurt by anything. So, so we ask God for perfect marriages. See, see we, w- what happens is, is that a high paying job is an attempt to avoid your reliance on Jesus. See, see when, when you got a high paying job, you don't need to rely on God for your provision because Jesus isn't necessary because you've got money. But th- that's not the reality. The reality is, is that we need to be dependent on Jesus for everything that we need. And see, w- what happens? What happens when the thing that you prize the most becomes the thing that makes you most miserable? <laughs> See, what happens when that child that you prayed and asked God for, what happens when that thing becomes the thing that makes you miserable? What happens when the job that you ask God for, what happens when that becomes the source of all of your frustration in life? What happens when that spouse that you prayed and labored and fasted for and asked God for, what happens when they become the source? of your anxiety. See, here, here's what we got to capture, we got to know, is that, is that when, we, when we really understand what gratitude and generosity, what, what giving thanks is all about, you will understand that it's not about the gift, <laughs> it's about the giver. I, I wish I had some people who understood what I was talking about. See, see, see sometimes when, when you're walking with Jesus, listen, listen, you can be thankful for the gift even when the gift isn't doing what you want the gift to do because you recognize the giver over above the gift. See, I, I wish I had some help. See, when, when, you, when, when you recognize the giver, when you, when you recognize the one who is able to provide for you even in the midst of a storm, when you recognize the one who's able to provide for you even in the midst of a drought, what you're able to do, how you're able to walk, how you're able to present yourself is at a high, highly different level than when you're focusing just on the gift. See, when the gift acts up on you <laughs> and you're not focused on the giver, you start to get depressed. See, when the gift acts up and, and you're not focused on the giver, you, you, you start to get anxiety. When the gift acts up and, and you're frustrated and, 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 and you start to get annoyed because you're not focused on the giver. See, here's the question. Can you be generous? Can, can you express gratitude even when you're jobless? It says here that his, that his highly valued servant was sick and about to die. That word for die, it means to, be, to come to an end or to decrease or come to a close. See, back in the day, we used to have something called testimony service in church. And, and it was one lady who testified in church uh, about how she lost her job due to the organization closing. But God challenged her to continue giving. Now, now, now more than, <laughs> than that, she valued giving as a spiritual priority in her life. So here's what she started doing. She started beginning to do little jobs for people. And, and, and she would take the money that she earned and give a portion of that money that she decided to give in her heart. And, and for 10 months, this saintly woman, she gave generously out of her lack. 
And one day she received a letter in the mail from her old company. And the letter cited some reasons for the company's closing. But then it began to discuss how much they valued their employees. And inside of the letter that talked about how much they valued their employees was a check for $150,000. This woman who valued the spiritual priority of giving continued to give even out of her lack and 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 she did that out of obedience to Jesus and as a result just like the scripture says give and it shall be given unto you pressed down shaken together and running over see there is something to this principle of generosity and gratitude and giving thanks when you are thankful for everything that God has given to you you begin to open up a doorway for God's blessing in your life. This isn't to say you give this money and do all that and God's going to bless you financially and pour all this stuff onto you. That, That happens sometimes. But it's the principle of being faithful and stewarding what God has given to you. That's why you don't, that's why you shouldn't complain. (laughs) <laughs> Hold on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step on some people's toes today. See, see, that's why you don't complain. Because when you complain, what you do is, is that you tell God that what he's given to you isn't enough. See, when you complain about that husband <laughs> who won't act right, <laughs> when you complain about that husband who, who won't take out the trash regularly, when you complain about those things, what you are communicating is you're communicating that the gift that God has given you in that husband or that wife is not good enough for you anymore. And therefore, you deem, to, you deem yourself to be the controller and ruler of your life. And the reality is, is that God is called us he's urging us to trust him with our everything here's what happened I want to I want to get back to the text I want to stick closely verse 3 it says that when a centurion heard about Jesus he sent some of his servants and he sent his servants to Jesus and he sent some of the Jewish elders to him requesting to him to come And saved the life of his servant, excuse me. And when they reached Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly saying, he is worthy for you to grant this because he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. See, the the, the centurion had a certain perspective about Jesus that caused him to seek Jesus. See, he understood something about Jesus that caused him to pursue Jesus in his time of need. (laughs) Do you know where to turn? For generosity in your time of need. (laughs) See, if you're looking to man to be generous to you, guess what? You're going to be disappointed each and every time. But if you're looking for God to be generous and gracious to you, guess what you're going to find? You're going to find grace and generosity. And so we've got to stop looking to other places uh, as a source of generosity in our lives and start looking to the one who is most gracious and most generous and express gratitude When we approach him. Now watch this. We'll see in this passage that it was because of the centurion's generosity to the Jewish people that he was able to send Jewish elders in to help him gain access to more generosity. See, (laughs) see, it's your generosity that opens up a doorway for God's generosity in your life. See, the reason for that is this. Here's the reason. I want to help us today. The reason for that is this, is that the reason is, is that God will not be outdone. See, you, you, you can't beat God. You can't outdo God with your generosity. See, when we are generous with our finances, when we are generous with our time, when we are generous with our gifts and serve in the body of Christ, we activate the generosity of God in our lives. That's why Malachi chapter 3 and 10 says, he says, test the Lord in this way. 
He, he's saying, he says this, the, 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 Lord of our, the Lord of hosts says this. He says, he says, bring your full tents into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. And he says, test me in this way, says the Lord of hosts. He said, see if I, if, if I, not, I will not open up a floodgate of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. See, Jesus, he is letting us know. The scriptures already let us know is that when we are generous, we open up a doorway for the generosity of God in our lives. And we need the generosity of God. <laughs> so here's what happens. He told them to test him. <laughs> God has been speaking this over me in, in, in my personal quiet time. God has been speaking that same word over me. He said, test me. <laughs> He's been speaking that word to me with regard to this church in the midst of this pandemic. God wants to do some things in and through this church, and he's asking us to put him to the test. See what I see. See, I, I see in, in, in the near future, I see God working in miraculous and powerful ways through this church. I see God moving in such a way through this church that we won't be able to, to, to keep people at bay because the reputation that's being built here. And, and listen, we exist to help people to, we help, we exist to, to help the grace of God appear in the lives of all people. That's why we call ourselves epiphany from Titus chapter two, verse 11, which says, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. That word appeared is the Greek word epiphano, which is where we get the word epiphany from. And that's what we want to be. And that's what God has been speaking over me in this season is that we ought to put God to the test with our generosity and see that God won't open up a window for us and begin to move mightily through us as people. God wants us to walk in what he's calling us to. And here it is. Verse four says, when they reached Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly. See, generosity is about reaching Jesus. See, anytime you want to be generous and anytime you practice generosity, you come near to Jesus and I'll submit that it is impossible for you to be truly generous without coming near to Jesus. See, there are people who are philanthropic. There are people who, 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 who give lots and lots of money towards things. They're very charitable and all that. But, but I want to argue that it's, it's virtually impossible to be generous without coming near to Jesus. Because generosity is all about perspective. Hear this. I want you to see this. Come with me. He says, take, uh, you know, we got to take this, this with us too, is that it is impossible to be near Jesus. <laughs> Here's the next part. It's impossible to be near Jesus and not become generous. John 4, 14, he says, but whoever drinks from this water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. In fact, the water that I will give him will become a well springing up in him for eternal life. When you're gripped by the nearness of of Christ, when you're gripped by your nearness to Jesus, generosity will overflow in your life. I want you to watch Jesus's words here. A wellspring springing up in John chapter four. A, a, a wellspring springing up in us. And so, and so here's what I need us to capture. And here's what I need us to see as we walk through this, as we understand this, is that Israel was a place that was filled with a whole bunch of hot springs. See, we, when I went to Israel, I went there and, and we were walking along, we were climbing some mountains and our, and our muscles were sore and, and, and I had no idea uh, what was gonna happen next, but they took us on a wonderful experience to one of the hot springs that existed in Israel. So, so when we get to the water, we get into the water, into this hot spring, and instantly our muscles start to relax because of, of, of the medicinal properties of and the healing properties of those of those springs. And what Jesus was saying to us, he's saying to us is this, is that is that when we walk in generosity, when we, when we walk in generosity, what we do is, is, is and we accept the generosity of God in our lives. It becomes a wellspring in us springing up towards other people. And God will use us 
through our generosity and then us receiving his generosity, he will use us to provide healing properties for people who are hurting, who are hurting and need to find freedom and for people who need to discover what their purpose is and for people who desire to make a difference and who don't know God and who are hurting. That's what we get to do when we walk in generosity. <laughs> says that they pleaded with Jesus. I'm back to back to Luke chapter seven. It says when they reached Jesus, verse four, they pleaded with him earnestly, saying he is worthy for you to grant this because he loves our nation. You better know how to come to Jesus when you're in need. <laughs> See, these Jewish leaders went to plead the case for the Gentile leader because he was in need. And see, you better know, again, how to come to Jesus when you are in need. Remember, your generosity will not go unnoticed. See, see God noticed our generosity for its internal merits. It, here's what it says. He says that his love for his servant, he, he highly valued the servant that he had. And, and here's the gospel. You will never be worthy enough to afford the granting of God's blessing in your life. Why? Simply because of sin. Sin doesn't allow us to afford anything from God. But here's what happens. The gospel of Jesus Christ is this, is that Jesus came into the world, was born. He lived. He died. He was buried. He rose from the grave. And in that, he offers us the ability to have the grace of God showered upon us. So here's what I want you to see. God <laughs> doesn't need our little bit of coins. God doesn't need our little thank yous. <laughs> see, I, I know you think that your little contribution makes all the difference in the world. I know you think that the little stuff that you do matters a whole bunch to God, and it does, but it's not what God really wants. Your generosity does more for you and your faith than it does anything for God. <laughs> you aren't doing God any favors when you are generous to his church, but you're doing your faith a favor. And that's more important. You got to do your faith a favor. Here's the next thing I need to see. Generous hearts recognize their worth. See here, verse six it says that when Jesus went to them and when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to tell him, Lord, don't trouble yourself. It says, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. That's why I didn't even consider myself worthy to come to you, but just say the word. The centurion's perspective was this, is that he wasn't even worthy enough <laughs> for Jesus to come underneath his room. This Gentile knew something that the Jews couldn't comprehend. And here's, here's our main problem when it comes to generosity, is that we think that we are entitled to what we have. See, we think that we're entitled to drive a brand new car. See, we think that we're entitled to, to live on the gentrified side of the city. We think that we're entitled to make the kind of money that we're making. And generous hearts don't think that they are worthy of anything they have. And that's why it's so easy for them to give. That's why the centurion could so easily place uh, his, his highly valued servant's life in the hands of Jesus. And, and, and here's what happens. Generosity allows us to, to, to remove the value that we place on stuff and place it onto the Savior. That's why the centurion said, listen, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof, nor was I worthy to come to you because I know that I am not in a position to ask you for anything because I don't deserve anything from you. And we got to be able to understand that in our hearts is that we aren't deserving of anything that God has to give to us. Only thing that we are deserving of is the grace of God that he affords to us 
through his son Jesus. That's why the centurion said this, and I love this. He said, just say the word. <laughs> he says, just say the word. See, what he was doing, this is, this is a double entendre here. He's saying to him, he's saying to him, just say the word. And he's using the word logos there, which is the word that is referred to, that Jesus is used to refer to Jesus in John chapter one, when he says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. What he's saying to them, he's saying, listen, Jesus, just speak unto yourself, proclaim unto yourself that my servant will be healed. And I know that my servant is going to be healed. And sometimes we just got to say his name. If we're going to get freedom. Sometimes we just got to say the name of Jesus if we're going to be made whole. Sometimes we just got to say the name of Jesus if we are going to be made free from the bondage of, of, of this world and from the bondage of things that try to grip us and hold us. We just got to learn how to say his name. See, generous hearts have astonishing faith. And I'm in verse nine. It says, listen, when Jesus heard this, when he heard the servant say, don't even come, just say the word. I got people under me. I know what authority is like. Just say the word. But Jesus said that to him. Jesus heard him say that. Scripture says that Jesus was amazed. <laughs> let, let me mess up your theology real quick for all, for all of my for religiously astute people or, who, who, who are very highfalutin and all that. Generosity causes God to have admiration for us. And the reason that it causes us, God to have admiration for us, is because it causes us to step into an arena of faith that we don't typically have. See, when you step into this arena of faith, you are able to convert your circumstances because you recognize that circumstances aren't anything. <laughs> The only thing that matters is where is your trust? And see, when you learn to place your trust in Jesus, you'll be able to convert your circumstances and walk in a wholly different way. Because the reality is this, is that when you practice generosity and gratitude, when you give back to God as he is graciously given unto you, when you say this stuff that I have don't belong to me, it belongs to Jesus. So I'm going to give it back to him anyway. When you say that, when you recognize recognize that the gratitude that you need to express towards Jesus is simply an expression out of the fruit of all that God has given unto you. When you can recognize that and when you begin to walk in that reality of generosity and giving things, you will be able to be able to convert your circumstances and set yourself apart from the crowd. Jesus turned to the crowds and he said, I've not seen such faith in all of Israel. <laughs> he turned to them. He said, I, I haven't found such faith, such, uh, I'm sorry. He says, I haven't found such great faith in all of Israel. Generosity is not about the quantity of your faith. It's about the quality of it. And see, when it's, it's, so it's not about how much you give. It's not about how much money you put in the plate. It's not about none of that it, it, or any of that. Excuse me. I want to speak uh, properly. <laughs> it's not about any of that. What it is about, it's about the quality of your heart when you give. Do you give because you recognize that God is the one who gives? <laughs> when you give, is, is it because you recognize that God is the one who deposits? See, here's what happens. Here's what happens. It says that when those who had been sent by the centurion, when they went back, they found the servant in good health. Generosity produces good health. <laughs> oh, I wish I had some people who understood what I was saying. Generosity produces good health. See, when you walk in thankfulness, when you walk in gratitude, when you have a generous heart, it produces good health for you. I'm not saying if you give money that God will cure cancer. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying any of that. But what I am saying is that when you're generous and you express gratitude towards God, it causes you to have good health spiritually. It causes you to be in good health spiritually. 
And so when things don't go your way, guess what you can do? You can turn to Jesus <laughs> and, and you can rest in him and know, listen, I, I've got everything that I need because I got Jesus. If you know that if you got Jesus, you've got everything that you need, you can just type in the section, I've got Jesus. And Jesus gives us everything that we need. Maybe you're watching today and you don't have Jesus. <laughs> Maybe you're watching and you don't really understand this Jesus that I'm talking about. I want to invite you into a relationship with Jesus that transforms your life. See, if you place your faith in Jesus today, he promises you that he will give you life and life to the full. All you have to do is place your faith and trust in Jesus. Scripture says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, then you can be saved. And once you get saved, get into a life-giving church, get into some healthy relationships and with, with other people who are following Jesus and trying to live like Jesus, get into some relationships with people who are trying to walk with Jesus, and he'll transform your life and transform your heart. Won't you trust Jesus today? He's able to save you. Won't you trust him today? He's able to fix your heart. And if you're a follower of Jesus and you've been walking in ungratitude, if, you, if, if you've been unthankful, it's time to repent. It's time to repent and turn to Jesus and thank him with the fruit of your lips and respond to him by giving as he's graciously given to you. He's given you all of his time. In fact, he stopped eternity to come be with you. He gave to you all of his talents. He took his son, his only begotten son. That word means his unique son. And he gave him to you so that you might have a relationship with God. He took all of his treasure. He emptied everything that he had and gave his own life on the cross so that you might have a relationship with him. So you can give your time, you can give your talent, you can give your treasure back to God in an expression of giving thanks. It's that simple, family. Turn to Jesus today. He's able to save you. He's able to give you everything that you need. Let me pray. Father, I pray today by your spirit that you would teach us today. Help us to walk in grace. Help us to walk in your love. And by your spirit today, God, I pray, God, that you would be with us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Family, thanks so much for watching today. We're so excited that you were with us. If you're a giver, you know how to give. Uh, it, it, just go online or go to the Church Center app and you can continue to give. If not, um, become a giver. Learn what it means to walk in generosity. And we're just so thankful that you joined us today. And we'll see you again next week. Grace and peace.